Horrors and gents, I'm Rusuji Reaction and this is Unlimited Resources from Space by the channel Kuzgazat in a nutshell. Asteroid mining. Getting rare materials from the ground into your phone is ugly. The mining industry is responsible for air and water pollution and the destruction of entire landscapes. But what, what if we could replace the mining industry on Earth with a clean process that can't harm anyone? Well, we can. All we need to do is look up. Yeah. I mean, that's the argument lots of people make. Like, people are talking about lots of, uh, you know, electric cars being uh, less uh, heavy on the environment. But, you know, just making the batteries alone causes lots of environmental damage. Obviously, it's more of a, you know, short-term damage. But long-term, it causes less damage than the, you know, petrol-powered vehicles. But, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, asteroid mining. Yeah, this is... Uh, there is a saying like first trillionaire probably is going to be a guy who mines asteroid that's why jeff bezos is also one of the guys who's trying to spend money on space because he wants to do this basically uh you know elon musk also has this goal in his mind people think elon musk just want to go to mars and that's it it's one of his goal like when he was a kid he was watching mars and he wanted to go there or some shit like that no it's not that it's bigger frontier you know, he's targeting Mars, but eventually he wants to dominate space as a frontier and make it more accessible so he can mine asteroids and things like that. That is the next big frontier that if people do it, they'll be immensely rich and the whole planet will basically benefit. So asteroid mining is a great point because lots of rare Earth elements like, you know, platinum, gold, iridium, it's rare on Earth. That's why they're rare Earth elements, but they're not really rare in space. There are lots of asteroids, you know, rich in those. So there are lots of important rare earth elements that, that are found throughout in everywhere in the asteroid belts and everywhere, you know, th that could make things easier. And the most uh, biggest thing I can think of is that the mega structures that we could build in space, if we can dominate a space frontier in a way that we have accessible rockets, reusable rockets that are, that are already becoming a thing right now. They are a thing, but they are going to be even better in the future. So reusable rocket as vehicles. Now you can just basically travel in space because you have bases on Mars, even in the, on the moon. So it's kind of easier. So now space is more accessible. People can go back and forth from there. So if, if you can do that, now you can think about using the asteroid and all the materials there to create any mega structures in space because... Creating mega structures in space using the material there is not going to be as costly as, you know, basically using material here or, you know, basically transporting material or whatever like that. So, yeah, it, you know, that's just next uh, frontier is going to be awesome. I worked quite a few Cosgazard videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards. There's a playlist of greater for it. Cosgazard reactions, something like that. I upload lots of videos in 24 hours, so lots of people don't get notification of videos that I upload. So you might have missed something. Check out the playlist. Uh, check out the playlist too, like uh, Real Life Lore, who just uploaded the latest video. I reacted to that. Uh, you know, CGP Grey, uh, yeah, Internet Historian, all these sarcastic products and things like that. And yeah, let's watch this one. Ah. Oh casually watching a video on YouTube on a computer more powerful than anything humanity could build a few decades ago. This progress and all the wonderful machines... Yeah, during the Apollo program, uh, computer, computer power was not as strong as some of the greeting cards have today. I mean, that's just ridiculous when you think about it. ...things you take for granted are built on a few rare and precious materials with names like terbium, neodymium or tantalum. Getting these rare materials from the ground into your devices is ugly. The mining industry is responsible for air and water pollution and the destruction of entire landscapes. Dangerous chemicals like cyanide, sulfuric acid or chlorine are used to extract the resources, harming biodiversity, workers and locals. And rare resources are also political tools when countries restrict access to them to get their way. But what if we could replace the mining industry on Earth with a clean process that can't harm anyone? Well, we can. All we need to do... Well, even if we can take uh, resources from Astra, that's still going to be a political thing because there will be select countries who has access to basically, you know, things like that. I mean, not everybody who has a space agency can do that. They will eventually, but not at the start. There'll be very few who can do it. I mean, if it becomes a business thing, like, you know, uh, people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk do it, they'll make it into business. They won't use it as a political thing because they're not politicians. They would sell to, to the whole world, obviously. That, in that way, people would benefit. Is look up.
asteroids are millions of trillions of tons of rocks, metals and ice, leftovers from the cloud that became the planet 4.5 billion years ago. They can be as small as a meter or protoplanets the size of entire countries. Most of them are concentrated in the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt, while hundreds of thousands more do their own thing between the planets. As space travel is becoming more feasible, scientists and economists have begun looking at the resources found in these asteroids. Even relatively small metallic asteroids may contain trillions worth of industrial and precious metals like platinum. And bigger asteroids like 16 Psyche could contain enough iron nickel to cover the world's metal needs for millions of years. Damn. At current market prices, the rare raw materials alone would be worth quadrillions of dollars. Well, not really, but technically. Yeah. For example, there are more. <laughs> that, that's the most funniest thing I ever hear when somebody talk about like, there are so much diamond in space. Could you imagine if you bring all those diamonds, how much it would be worth? I guess very less because there's so many now. Have you ever heard of inflation? <laughs> more than 20 million tons of gold in the ocean's water worth roughly 750 trillion US dollars. But filtering out the gold would be so expensive that you'd lose money selling it. Right now, asteroid mining has exactly this problem. It's too expensive to replace mining on Earth. Billions of dollars worth of valuable resources in space are worthless if it costs trillions to get them. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, uh, whenever a business is run, they, see, they find the uh, cheapest option. So people are like, okay, we are running out of drinking water. Can't we basically desalinize the seawater? I mean, we can, but that costs money more than, uh, you know, people are spending right now. So uh, same thing with, the, I guess, all the natural resources and things like that. Those cost less than any other alternative. But the day comes when everything's exhausted. Now people will go to the other option, basically. So, you know, I mean, asteroid mining can happen right now, but it's just costly. It's much easier to, I guess, dig the ground that we live on, even though it, it hurts the environment. I mean, uh, people don't see that. That's why there are lots of global warming or any kind of climate deniers, because it, it hurts massive businesses. What makes it so hard? The principles behind mining an asteroid are simple. The basic idea is to choose an asteroid, move it to a place where it's easy to process, and then take it apart to turn into useful products. Unfortunately, all of this collides with fundamental problems humans have yet to solve. Going to space is expensive. It costs thousands of dollars in rocket fuel for each kilogram just to reach a low Earth orbit. Going further out into deep space costs thousands more. We need cheaper space travel to make asteroid mining profitable. Once <laughs> That's the same thing people say. All the basic waste that we have right now, we, we, we don't have any place to put our waste that we create. Can't we just throw it at the sun? Yeah, we can. G give, give me money, I guess I'll throw it in, into the sun. I mean, it's way too costly. It's not a joke to put, I mean, one pound of waste probably would cost about thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, come on. One solution is to switch from classical rockets to electric spaceships. We already ah, use electrical to, rocket yeah. engines for many of the space probes on science missions. In principle... Yeah, basically electric engines in space. You know, I heard about that. There was a big thing about Hayabusa 2. So I you know researched it at the time. Basically, this works as iron, you know, iron engine generation of plasma using microwaves. That's how these things work. So yeah, this is just awesome. Even though they don't have much of sheer power, they're more efficient, so they can go at long distances. So in space, they will really work. I mean, you can't basically launch them uh, from uh, Earth, uh, basically on the ground to the space. I mean, I don't think we have that technology yet, but you know, in, if you're already in space, th th this would work wonders. We only need to build bigger ones. While electrical engines are not powerful enough to fly to space, they require only a tiny amount of fuel to go very far once they're in space. Yeah, yeah, they're efficient. This means we don't need to spend a lot of money on fuel, only to transport fuel into space. This doesn't solve the whole cost problem, but it makes it easier to start our first mission. Now that we have an electric asteroid mining spaceship, we need to find the right asteroid and get it there. We've already successfully visited asteroids with space probes and even collected samples. Still, to make it easier and cheaper, our first targets will probably be near-Earth asteroids. Asteroids that orbit, well, near Earth. After a few months of travel, our spaceship finally arrives at our asteroid. 
Weirdly formed, littered with small impact craters, it hasn't changed much for billions of years. The first thing that needs to be done is to secure the asteroid and stop it from spinning. There are multiple ways to do this, like vaporizing material with a laser or stopping the rotation with thrusters. Once we have a stable asteroid, we need to wait. Orbital mechanics are complicated, but if you push something in the right direction at exactly the right moment, you can move very big things with very little force. So, we wait for exactly the right moment. Our ship fires its thrusters and nudges the asteroid into a trajectory that takes it near our moon. The moon is useful because we can borrow its gravitational pull to put the asteroid in a stable orbit around Earth, which saves even more fuel. Again, the trip takes months. But all the time since our ship was launched has not been wasted. The first space mining and processing equipment has been installed in orbit and is now carefully... I don't know why this sounds like Olsen's 11 type of thing. But there's, you know, thief music playing in the background where all this planning take place. That, you know, there's everybody who's doing this kind of different maneuver, closing the roadblocks to, you know, divert the traffic or something like that. This sounds like that. ...be moving towards the asteroid. The processor works very differently than on Earth. Giant mirrors focus sunlight and heat up asteroid rock to boil out the gases. Grinders break up the dried rocks into gravel and dust, and centrifuges separate dense from light elements. Even if we only extract 0.01% of the asteroid's mass in precious metals, this is still several times more than you'd get from the same amount of ore on the ground. But what now? How do we get our precious metals safely back to ground? There are a few ways, like loading it into reusable rockets that return to Earth from space. Or if our processor contains 3D printers, we can print a faster and cheaper delivery system. Heat-shielded capsules filled with gas bubbles. These can just be dropped into the oceans where ships tow them away. This could be the starting point of humanity's first real steps towards colonizing the solar system. Seriously, that would As be our infrastructure and experience grows, our missions get more and more sophisticated. Part this is really complex, but if we can do it, there will be one of those achievements like first time, you know, Americans landed on the moon. There was this achievement feel at the time. This, was, this would be like that because this is not just some sending certain thing at this, you know, trajectory and landing or somewhere like on the Mars, you know, on the basically Titan or something like that. No, this is complex procedures happening in space, diverting asteroid to close to Earth and literally extracting minerals. They would be, this would be next level shit right there. Some fuel produced on asteroids don't have to be launched from Earth at all. The first mining operation makes the second one easier, and so on. While the space industry grows and precious materials become cheaper, eventually we could stop mining on Earth. Even the idea of toxic mining down here might become something weird and anachronistic, like having an open fire in your living room. Landscapes Seriously. ravaged by pollution will heal, while the technological wonders we're used to get cheaper and less toxic to make. When people used to have open fire, you know, a long time ago, nowadays they just have heater. Now if so anybody lights a fire in your living room or something like that, what the fuck? That would be weird. None of this is science fiction. We don't need fancy materials or new physics to make asteroid mining happen. Yeah, we, we can, can start now. building this future today. All we need is an initial push. Maybe you could also use a little nudge, not to pursue anything as ambitious as asteroid mining, just to try something new and fun. Let us give you some tailwind there. Yeah, people, go to skillsar.com for us because Gazakt 8 and support this channel or just go to the original page. There's a link in the description for the original video. Yeah. Asteroid mining is the future, definitely. That's the resources we are going to take from, I guess. But I think that's where the everything is going. Current age, people are not realizing, or maybe they are. It's the same like they were once doing the Apollo program. Not at the same level, but it, it feels like that. Like even the NASA is doing it. You know, obviously Elon Musk is doing it. You know, uh, Jeff Bezos is somewhat trying it. India trying it now. There are lots of different countries. China, lots of different type of countries. are in uh, Dubai, you know, everybody's trying to, you know, do something in space. This, at first it was just Russia and USA doing the Apollo program. Now it's so many countries, it feels promising, like just out of competition or not competition, people will achieve lots of things. You know, we already have, you know, reusable rockets. They have rockets, were, you know, basically you use it and throw it away. Now it's, you don't have to do that.
So their rockets already have become like vehicles. That's a massive thing. I didn't thought that would happen for a long time, and it did. That, that surprised me a lot. Like, this is some next level shit. If we can make rockets like into vehicles. I mean, that's just it. I mean, you, you, you have access to space now. That's not going to cost much. So, the future is awesome. Alright, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards for the playlist. Check out the end cards. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time.